All right, guys. So as part of our first bonus episode here, we just wrapped up the holiday special. We're trying to keep this format at like about 30 minutes. And we we immediately realized that we missed one of the best parts of the entire holiday special. You know, we we like dipped our toe into like some of like the goofy stuff that we thought was kind of funny that, you know, always probably gets talked about with that holiday special. But one of the shining moments really truly is the animated section. What did you, what did you think of that, Drew? Dude, I absolutely loved it. Like, so, and I've seen, I've seen clips of it, you know, like weird clips here and there. And I thought, again, not, not knowing much about the holiday special. I thought that there was, an animated series or an animated short that they made. Um, you know, like Star Trek has an animated show and it's got all the, the, you know, the original voice actors. I thought it was kind of something like that because they, they copied each other a lot. Um, and so seeing it pop up, I thought, Oh, this is, and I love animation. I'm a huge fan of animation. Um, and I liked the look of the characters yeah. with one exception. Um, but I thought Harrison Ford looked great. It was that caricature. It really had like the deep lines in his face. Um, you know, I, Chewie looked weird, but Chewie's a walking carpet. It's, it's hard to yeah. get that look. I mean, he looked fine animated wise. Um, but, uh, dude, I, I will say I hated how C3PO looked. Oh yeah. He was a little bit goofy. He was like hollow and sort of you know, like flip flopping around, like they had the, you know, the, the wires connecting him. And obviously, you know, Anthony Daniels in the suit has the wires to hide him, but it's like, they thought they didn't have to do that because it was animated. They're like, well, there's no one in the suit if it's animated. So let's just make him like one of those slinky toys. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like three PO is already kind of weird in his own, in his own right. So I'm like, that's, that's that's just odd. You know, I was I was I was definitely turned off by that. But everyone else looked like they're like the actors that played them. So I like that. Well, and we were talking about this like off recording here, but I had a note that said, like, how did you know, based on this, how did Bubba Fett not have like more airtime in the movies? And you brought up the point, which I had forgotten because I had heard this referenced before, like years sure. ago that this was the first appearance of Bubba Fett was in this animation in this obs- what is now obscure holiday special. So right. well and what's dude I love I love the detail that they have for Bubba Fett I- even in the the style. So there's the dent in his helmet. It's it's pretty much the same color scheme and uh do I absolutely so there's there's a lot of reference tied back and forth seeing him writing I'm just going to say him riding the dinosaur because that's kind of what it looked like. I'm sure it was, yeah. you know, like a, a, a early iteration of a dewback lizard or, you know, whatever. So that tie in leads to uh, when he's writing the Rancor in his in the book of Boba Fett. Like that was a fan reference that a lot of people missed. Yeah, oh, exactly. Like, OK, that's the whole thing. Boba Fett writing that that lizard creature they wanted to pay homage to it because you're right Boba Fett is and I think that helps his character in the original trilogy is that he's mysterious you don't really know his backstory and I think a lot of people got upset when you go to the prequels and then you kind of get the like oh he's a clone you know he's a clone trooper essentially like He's he's um you know he's standard growth he's not he doesn't have the growth hormone like the other clone troopers do, um, but I, I you know people are are upset because you know of the of the Bubba Fett story and like well that's not how he is like we don't really know how he is you know he shows up in the holiday special and then is like this weird mysterious character in um uh Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi it just so, makes me wonder like did they did somebody like create this character for the holiday special and then say, wow, like that needs to be in the movies or where were they at in the planning stages of empire? Yeah. Where like, maybe they already knew he was going to be in there. So they teased it into this holiday special to see like what people thought, but yeah, that's possible. I, I mean, I, I think too having, if, if you think about the other bounty hunters that are, that are kind of sort of featured in, in like some of the original stuff, um, Boba Fett is is the coolest because he has 
He has an outfit. He has armor similar to the stormtroopers, but it's just different enough to where you you understand like, okay, he has armor, so he's a bad person, but it's different. So he's not a part of the, you know, the Imperial getup. Um, and he's not, you know, he's not a robot. He's not an alien. Uh, well, I mean, you don't really know that he's, if he's an alien or not, you just kind of, you kind of assume, like, I always assumed that he was just like, again, like a regular dude, like he was, but he's the space Western part, you know, star Wars. A lot of people say it's a, it's a Western in space. He's the gunslinger, man. Like he's the one that's like strolling into town and, and, you know, he's like draw. And then he, you know, shoots the rocket off of his back instead of, you know, whatever, um, instead of like, you know, doing the, the dual face to face, but, um, he was that, that perfect opposite character to Han Solo. Cause Han Solo again is, is the, he would be like the white hat, um, you know, while he is still kind of a scoundrel, he does end up saving the day. And then you've got the black hat of, you know, Bubba Fett, very similar in characteristics and style, but uh, but no, dude. I I so I, I I mean I I loved seeing that in that context and going. This is the start of Boba Fett. Well, and just to, just to take it back to give it a little context in in the context of the holiday special, they're tossing Chewie's son's room, looking for like it, like uh, contraband essentially, and he like right. puts these headphones on. And like it, it like watches on like this contraption and all of a sudden this cartoon animation comes on. And you're just like, what? And it's just yeah, like, it's, like a, it's like a weird comic book kind of vibe. Yeah, he's like trying to like he's trying to like put his mind uh, somewhere else. So he doesn't real you know, he's not thinking about how like these Imperial troops are like tossing his room and like tearing his like stuffed animal apart and stuff. Um, right. Which so, then kind of makes me think like. Are there are the Star Wars comic books canon in Star Wars? So like in in, in some of the more recent superhero movies, there will be like, in you know, Captain America, like Captain America, you know, he started a long time ago. They made comic books about him and then he comes back, you know, whatever. So comic books are canon in a lot of a lot of superhero movies. Are they canon in Star Wars, too? Like, is this a virtual are there people going out and like like scribing down these stories, like writing down the, the adventures of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Chewbacca and Leia. Like, is there somebody out there doing that? Like, and to me, that's a huge missed opportunity. Like nerds are, are, are huge right now. Why not have a story? Even if it just shows up on, um, you know, like one of the side shows, uh, like dude, what, what's one of the best parts of, um, the Witcher? the bard like the best part of the witcher is the bard so why don't you have that kind of character coming in as comic relief for a future star wars project like i think that's fantastic yeah i agree that's um maybe that's something that we'll see maybe disney will see this episode and they'll take some notes and they'll and they'll add that in i hope they don't see this episode (laughs) (laughs) i mean if they do that's fine but um we are we are so small uh, in the grand scheme of things, but I, I, I do think that would be kind of cool. I mean, even if you went, um, I, while I'm not a huge fan of the Lego specials, I love the games, uh, and Legos themselves, but like, that's even something that you could throw into, uh, like a kid special, you know, yeah. I, I feel there's a lack of, you know, like maybe the, the fun animated type stuff. Yes, there was, uh, you know, Clone Wars, there was Rebels, there's the Bad Batch now. But a lot of that is kind of geared more towards, you know, your your more adult people. So, yeah, maybe maybe we can see something just kind of weird and whimsical and fun like this in the future. I would hope so. Well, maybe you should author some fan fiction. <laughs> and uh... yeah, and then we'll launch it. We'll release it to all of you and and we'll get we'll get notes. We'll it'll be a collaborative effort. All of us coming together to make the next star Wars holiday special. Oh, there it is. <laughs> well, Hey, I think that this about wraps up our first bonus content here. Uh, we yep. had to unpack the animated portion of the holiday special and it's fantastic. You should watch if nothing else, you should just watch that. Watch it for fun, you know, and, and feel free to jump through if you don't like it. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope to, 
you know, keep pumping these things out for you guys. We hope you like it. Please, uh, you know, like, share, comment, uh, give us your feedback. And don't forget to come back soon. We'll be waiting.